Morning everybody, welcome Morning, everybody. to the Galactic History Show. I'm your host Chris Hales and we have a big show queued up for you today. Beginning with Andrew Bassus, still broadcasting from the island of Kauai. Good morning, Andrew. How are you? Good morning, Chris. Live from a golf course on a beach in a condo in Kauai. Excellent. Uh, now, you are you may have to take yourself off, um, uh, off the speaker and go just to the headset because I'm getting a big echo from you at the moment. I am on the headset. Okay. In that case, we'll just have to see how it goes. Uh, the inter interference is quite heavy. How is that now? Uh, that is still still quite broken up, unfortunately. Still broken up. Let me take it off first. Yep. I've got the phone in my ear now. <laughs> How's that? That's okay, but you're still quite broken up. We'll see how it goes. Not that five bars. Yep. Fire me. <laughs> Let me move over here to the other side. Am I getting better reception? Uh, just keep talking. We'll find out soon enough. All right. Well, it's been an interesting couple of days. We've uh, moved from the Holiday Bay Resort to a condo by the beach. We've got our second week here, and we're looking for a, a home here in Kauai. Um, it's the second part of the plan is uh, that, uh, set roots down here and open uh, creating play spaces here for those people that are high energy, high vibration people. Excellent, and you're still finding that the the uh, the birds are actually gathering every time you um, every time you put the cones out and and start one of these shows. Absolutely, right now there's five chickens, four ducks, a bunch of birds, and a big semicircle around us. <laughs> So Dr. Doolittle, Dr. Doolittle is in the building. That's correct. Dr. Doolittle is saying, here, ducky duckies. Very good. I think it's the same ducks that followed us from the other resort, honestly. Really? Yeah, honestly. We're, we're, we're only like a mile, mile and a half from one to the other. So it's, it's not without possibility that these ducks go from condo to condo to condo, but <laughs> they're still here. Fair enough, fair enough. So you're thinking of putting down some roots in directly in Hawaii and, and actually staying there? That's correct. Um, the island has called all of us to be here in its, in its own way. And um, from the moment we got here, you know, the challenges that we faced to get here were outweighed by mm, the welcoming of the energies here. Excellent. Now, the journey, the journey, the journey of, of, of from the mountain to mountain is, end, is ending. And that's what you know. Setting roots down is setting roots down is about. You know, we started. I started in Mount Shasta in June the fifteenth, and now September the second, we're in Kauai next to Mount Kilauea. So it's a unique, unique transition from point to point, from one volcano to the other. Excellent. Now, speaking of the um, the the Mount Shasta event, the videos that you shot in Mount Shasta with Lance White are starting to appear up on, on YouTube or about to be posted to YouTube? Yeah, ironically, we were doing a test video and we put it on one of our other sites that we don't really promote and all of a sudden, somehow, some way, it has made it out and is spreading really fast and we love it because the material has been waiting in suspension for a very, very long time. So uh, we will have them up on SovereignMedia.net. If not, you should be able to find them spreading on YouTube from the Creating 5D channel. And uh, I encourage everyone to go look. I believe the first five videos are up. Um, the video production uh, company that we had working um, took some extra time to get it done. And uh, we'll have some higher quality stuff with more shots and angles up uh, later next month probably. And we'll probably be making the whole, the whole seminar and everything we did at Mount Shasta available for a single purchase. It's like 40 hours of video. Yeah, it's quite a lot of video. I mean, they're about 25 minutes, 20 to 25 minutes per video. Yeah. So yeah, there's 10, there's 10 25-minute videos, and then the entire conference was also recorded. Mm. That, will so. be, that will be excellent. Excellent. As well as the audio recordings from By the Fire. 
yeah. where people are reading out contract revocations and we are talking about um, the change in the universes. Now, all, on the line we've also got Andre Hodge, whom I think is, is his connection is still okay. Are you there, Andre? I am, Chris. How are you? We are good. We are excellent. And uh, Andrew tells me that you're going to be doing transcription work from the video shows and uh, working on the, the transcription of the seminar he did with Teal Scott last week. Yeah, yeah. Um, this goes back to his um, Adventures in Reality shows. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I've had many chats to Andrew about this and many people out there have probably listened to them. And there's a need for them to get into a format where people can read, not just listen to as well, because mm -hmm. there's great teachings in there. And um, I'm happy to sort of help out with that and get it done. And, you know, my instincts have been to actually, you know, push through any personal barriers and, and get onto it, because, um, you know, it, it's about getting ahead of the curve, so to speak, and it's been there for quite a while. Yeah. yeah, well, that uh, that show with Andrew and Teal last week that had some really amazing amazing statements in it, and uh, you know shows like that where, as you say, there's a there's a great there's a great density, a great uh, compactness about about some of these shows where the information is so prescient, it's kind of thick, and reading it is really quite fascinating. Um, when you when you're actually doing the shows. You don't necessarily remember a lot, uh, so it's it's actually important for me to see the transcripts as well, particularly of that show because there was so much spoken about there. Andrew, have you had any feedback about the the show you've done with Teal last week? Uh, I've had a tremendous amount of feedback with that show. It's uh, been one of those mind blowing, eye opening shows for many, many, many different people. Yeah, it was. Uh, it really spoke to you know one of the questions that just about everybody has at some point in their life, which is, you know, what the hell am I doing on this rock? Exactly. Um, Not only what are we doing on this rock, what is this rock? Yes, what is this rock? I mean, it turns out this rock is, is uh, in, you know, in its terms of its importance in the universe is, is, is biblical. You know, if, uh, one, of the, yeah. one of the concepts that kicked around in the Middle Ages was that the Earth was the center of the universe. Well, from a physical point of view, it's not right in the middle, but it's central to the universe, absolutely. Well, I think those people were trying to tell us something, even though physically through science, even though science is, is only a, a set of belief systems that we create and then we enforce from generation to generation, it was a culture trying to tell us something. Mm through their, their natural exploration. What was it they were trying to tell us? It's important. These times are important. You know, every year since 490,000 years ago has been vitally important. So important that each generation of migration of souls that come here is trying to break a cycle, a cycle that's so big and so large that took people able to read the entire timeline history. And that's what Mount Shasta was about. It took me and others that are in this capability of doing it to bring it to the public. Um, just yesterday I did a show with Dr. Dream and Laura Eisenhower. We did an off-air recording which will we'll air tonight at um, 5 p.m. Pacific, I believe. Um, uh, you can check out Dr. Dream and Laura and Eisenhower's uh, blog talk radio site and you'll be able to hear that show. And it's a very, very in-depth reality function show. Um, we talk a lot about the basics of reality. And both Dr. Dream and um, 6 p.m. Pacific time, it'll be on. And you'll, you'll, it'll be a really an interesting show. You know, for those that regularly listen to me and Chris, you'll be in the, you'll hear me in the flow, and then answer questions because um, Laura Eisenhower is a very powerful psych, and so is Dr. Dream. And when you have two people that are at that level who can hold that kind of space, much like when Chris and Lance are on, you know, it opens up the potential. And now I have, have Chris and Andre on, on the line, and that opens a whole new potential up. And this next part of the potential is uh, we're trying to get Chris to the event in October 3rd in um, 
Quito Key, Florida, which I'll be speaking along with Teal Scott, Dr. Dream, Laura Eisenhower, Lisa Renee, and that's uh, Tom Lesher. And we're going to be doing the Return to Atlantis event with uh, N5D Media. Uh, it's Greg Prescott and Helene Lipson, who are both absolutely wonderful, amazing people. And Chris is going to be hosting the live stream. And uh, so we're going to fly him from Australia to Florida. So we're going to be doing uh, two teleseminars uh, to raise money to get Chris to, to the teleseminar event. I'm sorry, to the event in Florida. So we're going to start promoting that as well as uh, we're going to have Andre on and talking about the transcriptions. And what we'd like to do is get people to give feedback. You know, Andre has had some incredible suggestions about the transcripts where you can, uh, you can write what I say or what the question is and then put a link to the video section where the timestamp is so you can go and listen to the actual words. Well, that's a tremendously interesting idea. Uh, Andre, you're actually going to pull out the, um, you know, some of the more significant passages. Actually, are you, and put them some, pull, put them somewhere to download? Yeah, well, I mean, it's a, I guess it's we're, we're talking out loud about the possibilities here. Um, yeah, you know, this and, is and, brainstorming as well. That. Yeah, yeah. Look, that's a, yeah, it's a good. I certainly understand brainstorming for sure. Yeah, so let's not put it out there as an actual thing that's going to be done. But putting, you're saying you're putting the timestamp on uh, on the uh, transcription so you can jump to that spot in the audio is what you have in mind. Yeah. Well, basically, there just needs to be some work done to identify the you know the real crackers of points where Andrew goes into it for a few minutes, right? And and say, you know, in in like I was I was present for many of his reading shows um, in the past and he talk about things like the elements or you know cleaning out the gut because it's attached to your emotional traumas and stuff like that mm -hmm. and many many things are repeated right so the key is to maybe hear it from three or four readings to you know if you have an interest in a topic which you can apply to yourself right because it was teachings for us all so um, you know, you can go through the topics and potentially identify the different people. It's going to be a bit of work, and you know, it, we've only just talked about it yesterday or whatever. But um, it'll be a great benefit for those who come because once the foundation is there, it's a lot easier for those that come. So, tremendous. Yeah. Well, uh, I certainly do want to get to the the um, return to Atlantis event. So uh, the the teleseminar material that uh, we're going to start putting together to help you get there would be tremendous if it's if you, if you guys out there can support it because well, I really would love to get to that, to that event I will get to that event actually one way or the other it will happen and if people would like would like to they can go to my webpage andrewbarches.com on the products page and there's a donate button there and you can put a message in that this donation is for Chris to get to the event the, for the lead of key event at uh, for the Return to Atlantis event. For those people that uh, enjoy Chris's conversations with me and the many shows that we do, you know, we'll also be putting the, the teleseminar as, uh, to raise funds to get Chris from, Chris from Australia to Lido Key, Florida. So that is another option. There is a donate button on my page. Uh, normally I use that for readings. Um, but you can use that. Just type into the notes that this is donation is for Chris to go to the Lido Key Return to Atlantis event. Mm, that would be fantastic if anyone is so inclined. And also, just to remind people, there's there's other shows that we're putting on during the week. I've got the repurposing show on on my little channel, which is One People Oneness Radio. That happens, uh, it it happens sun, uh, Monday afternoon for me, so it's sort of lateish Sunday night. Trying to move it to be a bit earlier, so the Eastern United States doesn't have to stay up late. And then I've got uh, the long conversation, which will be the same time as we're talking now, in, but in 24 hours. And um, doing doing about a teleseminar a week, approximately, with Andrew as well. So there's plenty of stuff around. Plus, while I've while I'm remembering, I've actually got a Facebook page going, which I'll put in the chat here. The um, the reception has been really good, and uh, I need to make sure I actually put the right uh, the right link in here. Uh, here it comes, folks. That's the Facebook page link. So if you want to jump on and like that page and say hi, that would be great too.
just trying to get a little. You can also jump onto onto my Facebook fan page, Andrew Bartsis, and you can like that too. Where we started that, I believe, two weeks ago, and we're up to through almost 400 likes, something like that. And uh, if you like the material, stop on by, give a like, give a comment, and uh, that's a place you can get regular updates as well as SovereignMedia.net. Yep, it's all good. We're sta gradually. It's taken a little time, but we're we've got the getting the information pathways uh, well established now so it'll be easy to find the material which should, will be tremendous and really looking forward to um, hosting the live stream we have an intention to have Hope Girl uh, as a co-host on that live stream working on that and uh, that, that actually should fall into place because she's not that not that physically not that far from where the conference is compared to myself particularly she's um, yeah on the East Coast, so hopefully that, yeah, that'll be it'll a work. Two day two day event live stream. So it'll be it'll be really special. It'll be Friday and Saturday and Sunday, um, the fourth through the sixth. So it'll be really a special live stream event and those that sign up for the live stream event will get the the access to the also the access to the archives to the other shows that we did as a promotion to it, like the Teal and Andrew show, the Chris and uh, brainstorming event we did with Blake as well as uh, some of the other material that we have, uh, especially for promoting this Return to Atlantis event with uh, Inside D Media, who Excellent. both Greg and Helene have been absolutely fantastic people. Yeah, they are working extremely hard to put this together, and it's going to be a, a particularly special event. We've got the, there's some tremendous beings coming together for this, Andrew. You know, yourself, Teal, oh, yeah. Anelia Benz, Tom Lesher. Uh, and, and others that you know, aren't in my head just at the moment. But Lisa, Lisa Renee, too. Lisa, Lisa Renee, exactly. These are mm -hmm. tremendously knowledgeable people and have a great presence, so it should be a pretty special thing. Yeah, and Dr. Dream will be doing his Galactivation on the Crystal Sands Beach, I believe that's Friday, I'm sorry, that Saturday night. And uh, it'll be very special for those that are in attendance. Even for those in the live stream, you'll all be exposed to the wonderful activation of the Crystal Sand Beach. Excellent. Excellent. Uh, we're also hoping to have Quilla Pele drop in today. Um, hoping he can uh, he can make it. We'll see how it goes through the show. He's going to pop in and uh, say hi to everybody. He's been on a journey around the United States. Um, very interesting story behind that. It's, it's, a, it's a journey to resolve a whole lot of ancestral karma but not for himself he's doing it for many many other beings as well do you want to speak about that for a moment Andrew um sure um uh, people have heard me talk about lookout mountain or sign off with lookout mountain and he's um a part of that multi-dimensional organization that warned people that were stuck in a 28-year time loop that timeline incursions were coming and they were stuck in this 20-year time loop because they were trying to back to an incarnation cycle and so they could get out of the timeline genocides that were going on and it was a way to put people in suspension that were locked outside of time and um, as the time wars got greater and greater it spread beyond earth and the more earth got teleported around the more the timeline genocide pollution started spreading to thousands and thousands of other worlds and it the lookout mountain the entire concept had to spread from a single planetary concept to a galactic to intergalactic to a universal concept to warn species from around the universe if you've ever invested a single human a single strand of dna within the constructs of the galactic ascension machine you could be a part of the timeline genocide if one person went to earth at one point in history during a timeline genocide and that entire lineage could be removed in the future from their world, even though their consciousness still existed in the Acacia record of their world or this home world, they were locked outside of the events of co-creation and manifesting the present self. So it was a warning system, and that warning system was very, very important and saved many billions of lives. And after the timeline genocide uh, came to a, a pause and then finally to an end and then to a restart, um, KP, many other souls, Hope Girl Chris, the Venetian philosophers, including me, got caught into the incarnation, reincarnation cycle here on Earth on purpose to be a part of the awakening that came deep into the future. But many of us understood that no matter what, there would be a, a, a slow dissension of Earth species, and we had to stay in the incarnation patterns here and we had to stay connected to the timeline genocides of Lookout Mountain so that we could warn other species that 
it didn't matter where you were in the timeline, your species could be erased and replaced. And there needed to be a warning system in place so people can take go go to the consciousness timeline fallout shelters, which were pockets of reality that could resist the timeline genocide. And KP and along with Greg Prescott were, were master voices that spoke out to the universe warning that a timeline incursion was coming, that to take take to take it to your fallout shelter and to expand your consciousness into a bubble of protection. So his spirit voice, um, Greg's voice, your voice, my voice, those those that are, are, are part of Lookout Mountain spoke to the universe in, in such a way that we saved billions, but it was our service to the universe. And now in this future where we are far long removed from the high dimensional high vibration we were, you know, 500,000 or 50 million years ago, we're all reduced to the lowest common denominator, use your free will or not. And KP and Hope Girl and Chris, they're all using their free will now to use their voice, their vibration, their heart, their intonation to say, we are here and we can be free. In KP's situation, he is traveling to the points of, of the United States to unravel the energies so that he and his own expression of this lifetime can commune to the energies through his lightning spirits that he functions with. And as he's finishing his trip now, he's realizing that the ancestral karma of Lookout Mountain is there. And these are the souls that are still trapped in consciousness fallout shelters waiting to be released. And as his trip ends, um, he'll have a massive release party. And as he returns to Hawaii, he'll have another one because there are always people just outside of time doing the same thing. And he's leading the way with the big thunderstorms of lightning. In fact, he's just joined us as a matter of absolute perfect timing. So good, good morning. Good morning, Irony, yes. Uh, good morning, KP. How are you? Well, good afternoon to you. <laughs> indeed, indeed. I'm, I'm you, uh, very well. Excellent. Were you aware that Andrew was just speaking about your trip? Or did well, you... yes, I was. I just uh, tuned in just at the, at the, right moment. At the proper time. Yeah. And I was even sharing some of this with my auntie, who uh, we had uh, lunch together, and uh, she's very much attuned to what uh, uh, what really we're all doing, even though she doesn't know exactly who it is. And uh, but she's also connected with uh, uh, you know connected with her own uh, uh, native ancestral Native American uh, connections, and she was the first one that told me that actually bloodwise. Our family does have a um, connection to the Mohawk Nation, and uh, um, so. But yes, the the lightning is. I mean, I just, I kind of was finding it amazing each time. I said, I told her, I said, well, I went to Washington D.C. and before I got there, there was this huge thunderstorm and lightning, lightning and thunder, and uh, we felt it was, in, in a way, it was softening up the D.C. area. Uh, for the arrival of the carrier of the lightning, which appears to be, I guess I'm one of them. And, um, but when An Andrew was uh, talking about the, um, you know, carrying that, that, sp that spirit with me, I, I felt that way the whole time. And uh, that, that we've been kind of picking up, I know I'm. Tr I know there's a lot that we're a lot of not only 3D folks, you know, who are manifested in 3D, but there's so many beings that now are are traveling. All, we're all traveling together, unraveling this, whatever you want to call it. Um, Len, Andrew calls it one of you know the hairball of of uh, the the whole uh, rea dis disunity reality. Uh, time and let's just call it the time the time mess and just for those people who aren't who aren't necessarily following your journey KP's had a very successful blog on the internet for some time and and has quite an audience with that but that was all pretty much from Hawaii until a few months ago where you you felt it was time to do this and you've actually launched yeah. it in you know what it is in 3d is a road trip in a giant figure eight configuration right around the United States going through through cities that you feel moved to go through to do what you describe as clearing work and you're what a bit over halfway around KP well I would say um, geometrically we're about three-quarters of the way mm -hmm. um, 
it seems that this place where I'm at now, which is in the Midwest, uh, it's where my parents uh, call their home. And so, yeah, it became kind of evident to me somewhere along the line that, uh, you know, going up to California, Northern California, into Oregon, down to Chicago area, and then down to the southeast and up to the northeast and into Canada a little bit and coming back down, that's like three-quarters of an infinity. And mm. I do sense uh, there will be one trip that's not exactly on that the, the, that uh, infinity loop that I'll be going probably in a, in, in a few days. But then I feel very drawn to go to the southwest, and there's some connections that, and, and I'm probably some clearings that we'll be, uh, you know, we will be doing, working with as we go through the Southwest and probably up through California. Mm. And uh, so all of you in California, um, a lot, I'm sure a lot of folks who I've talked with and, and, and blogged with um, in California, I hope to connect with at least a few of you, um, maybe physically. And uh, then back to the starting point and uh, so all I can say is, Matson, be ready <laughs> mm -hmm. for my car. <laughs> mm. yeah, well, you've Back had, to Hawaii. You've had a lot of great experiences with, with people along the way. You've, um, you've stayed with people that you know, have, you've only known uh, you know, a little bit through, through your work on the blog and various other people that have popped up. So it's been, there's been a lot of synchronicities uh, all yeah. around. In fact, particularly where you were, you were going through the... Um, the southeast, and you were absolutely exhausted at one point. And there's um, uh, there's a there's a couple of folk there of our acquaintance, uh, Sandy and Kim, and right. uh, you you rang up rang up Kim and said, you know, Kim, uh, Kim, and said, look, really, no, is it or is it that you rang Sandy? Which one did you ring? No, I did. I I knew of Sandy. I had no idea what her number was. I had no idea where exactly she lived. Um, but I knew Kim lived somewhere in the Gulf Coast, so I called her and I said, you know, I was going, I was headed for Tallahassee, and I said, I can't make it. I'm not going to make it. My body just, at a rest stop, it had just said, no, no more. And I called Kim, and she said, well, where are you? And I told her where I was, and she said, oh, you're just like, you're just like 15 minutes from Sandy, and. Um, so I'll give you her number, and you can call her, and you can stay overnight at, at her place. So that was the, so I got to meet. I stayed a couple nights with Sandy and her husband Chris, and uh, and their cats. <laughs> and uh, then I went down to Kim's in Panama City, uh, and stayed with her for a few days. And um, it just the connections have been wonderful, and it seems like. In my own particular case, I have a very strong connection with the uh, the feline community, and uh, I definitely feel like feline galactic community. And so um, she also had a cat there. So uh, we're making all these connections on many many levels. Um, mm. And so so yeah, it's been quite a few. Uh, and I, I do have couple of nephews that are sort of adopted nephews and one I went to in Orlando just to visit but then my tooth flared up and I had some things that had to be done and he's a dentist uh -huh. and so he was one who really I, I must thank him his name is young that doesn't narrow it down there's a lot of youngs but he was um, uh, he doesn't really know it but because of him I was a, I'm able to continue the uh, the mission and then when I got up to uh, the D.C. area and we did the D.C. clearings and then into New Jersey is his brother, younger brother, who uh, works in uh, from a place near New York City in New Jersey. But as soon as I got there, it's amazing. He, he's not really into any, any of this stuff, but he said, boy, it just as soon as you arrived, it felt so much clearer and lighter. And uh, so I really feel a lot of people, even though they might not know what's going on, they kind of pick these things up and they know in, at some level that they are a part of this journey as well. Mm. So, uh, Andrew, just, just to bring you back into the conversation, Andrew, how many beings are really accompanying KP on this, this really major journey that he's taking? 
Um, before I answer that question, I want to ask KP, what have your dreams like since you started your journey? Oh, boy. <laughs> mm. <laughs> my dreams. Oh, boy. Since I started my journey. My goodness. Uh, a lot of times I'm not always aware of the actual content of the dream. Um, I can say that since I've arrived here, three quarters point, my overall, uh, uh, I would say my overall state of, of, of sleep has been much uh, better, uh, if you want to call it just, just a physical sleep. So I, I can't really say what my exact dreams are. Um, but I know that, for example, I slept very well a couple nights ago, extremely well. And I woke up in the morning, and I, it's almost like I wanted to go back to bed again. <laughs> mm -hmm. I, there's a lot of work going on. I can say that. There's a lot of work going on on the other side. That's, that's the, represent, the representation of how much work you're doing on the other side. The physical body you is in full 3D awareness that it must complete the mission. And right. your higher self is aware of the total mission, but it is you, the ever-present, mighty I am self, that procreates and creates the turns, the filling of the gas. It is the, the money that the exchange for value to create the trip and the life that you led before to make sure you could leave the trip. It was you that yeah. put your car and transferred it over to the United States so you could drive around with a Hawaiian license plate. It's you, the I am present self, making the choice point decisions to say, I am changing this. Now, to answer Chris's question, there's 2,732,306 people that are functioning with you right now. Okay? Wow. And they're always there in your crown chakra. They're always there functioning at one degree of separation of you. Now, Chris has heard me talk about this one degree of separation. Each and every person you have ever met in your entire life, each and every person that has ever visited your blog, each and every person you ever spoke to on the phone, there's one degree of separation for you. So that means all these people that are in your crown chakra are functioning on the spirit world to make sure the spirit world's within one degree of separation from you so that the I am present yeah. self knows in his heart of hearts, turn left, go north, wait for the thunderstorm, I'm tired, the synchronicities are abounding, get out of my own way and allow the universe to function with me in a creative way. Mm. The, syn the synchronicities are quite amazing. K KP rang me out of the blue uh, day and a half ago, and uh, yeah. we, you know we we do we talk very occasionally. So every time he, you know, every time he calls, I pay attention. And <laughs> one of the things he said to me is he wasn't he wasn't sure how he was supposed to end this. He knew he had to go to back to where he started, but wasn't sure what to do. And I, I pulled Andrew into the conversation, and that, that often is, is you know, not successful because Andrew is so busy. But he was there, and he was able to tell, tell you, Hawaii. KP, yeah, he was able to, he's in Hawaii where you came from, which is fascinating in itself. Right. But he was able to tell you exactly how to actually end the ritual. So you got your question answered virtually within about one minute of, of kind of posing it. Yes. And well, it was, and it was, I, I, I mentioned that, I said, well, so, every, so I can anticipate any time I call Chris, I'll be talking with Andrew. <laughs> it, it seems that way at the moment. We're all connected. Yeah, we're all connected. Well, I um, had a, a wonderful connection yesterday. I was I was um, trying to find the phone number to speak to Hope about being on the show today. She's going to be popping in in the second half. I, I yeah. strongly hope that. And uh, I thought I'd found it in my uh, actually as part of a text call that I'd received. So I hit the number and it actually wasn't her. It was uh, an energy worker that um, had come to see her when she was here in Melbourne with me. But he was on Skype with her in Pepe when I called. So I had my question answered immediately and I didn't even call her. So, you know, the synchronicity. Well, that's, that's pretty synchronistic. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it was... Uh, well, and, and, the, and the one degree of separation, I, I, I you know, it's, it's, a, it's, a, uh, it's a fascinating concept because I'm finding that even... Um, now, you know, I love my parents as parents and as people, 
as human beings, we're very pretty much 3D oriented, pretty much completely. But they always seem to, my, you know, my my father seems to intuitively know that he'll say, uh, "Well, Brad, I think you might be good to uh, let's let's." I'll, I'll get your oil change for you and have them do a full check on your car. And I think you might want to check, see if your tires need rotating. And when I was in Panama City, um, I fortuitously picked up a nail in my tire. So I had about a half flat the day I was going to leave Panama City. And Kim pointed me to a uh, Pep Boys, and we got that repaired. But my dad just told me today, he said, well, I talked to uh, uh, the guy who, uh, you know, his real close friend that has a little local shop here, and he said he recommended you get a boot uh, instead of instead of just having the plug. So he said, go over here and get a boot, on, meaning it's an internal thing, I guess, that makes a better seal uh, and permanent repair. But it's amazing. I, I just, I mean, I'm loving it. He, it's amazing. Like, he just tunes in and he says, yes, do this, do this, and this will help your journey. So he knows somewhere at that one, whatever that, you know, in the, that one degree of separation, if you want to call it that. It's, uh, I just, I'm the just. Spirit guide. Those absolutely. Those are the spirit guides working with their higher self saying, this person will be there, and all you have to do is be your honest, heartfelt person. Well, all I can say is it's, it's um, yeah, each moment, each part of this is really, I, I call it a blast, and when I left Detroit and found out the next morning that uh, that there literally was a blast in Detroit uh, that blew some manhole covers off in the in the business district of Detroit. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, you're, the so, first part of your name actually means the lightning, doesn't it, Quila? Quila. Quila. The the meaning for me it can mean electricity, um, or it can mean the lightning, and to me, it means the lightning, electricity. Um, so, um, so yeah, it just seems like I said, and I've always loved lightning. Uh, I've always loved to watch it. And uh, But it definitely, there have been times here when it's like I'm driving right into it, driving right into it. And I feel very, very much at, you know, at one with the whole process. So, um, um, so it's, it's, it's a blast. It is a blast. <laughs> so. Andrew, just to identify that 28-year period that that, um, that KP is actually reconciling for over two million beings, uh, how long ago was that? If if you can point it point to it, uh, that began 51 million years ago. So that was right at the start of this whole timeline issue that we're all caught up in. Right. It, it took two million years for it to go from one planet to the inside of our galaxy and then to spread to the rest rest of the galaxies and then to be a a near universal destruction event. A near universal... So many many, many DNA DNA lines that it didn't matter. If you were a consciousness explorer at some point in your galactic revolutionary scale of time, you would run across a linear time human, human DNA timeline genocide or any of those planets that were attached to it, and through one degree of separation, just by touching the timeline genocide by visitation, you could have yourself erased, which would erase your original being off your home world. Wow, and that was, was that the point at which uh, all of the planets that were caught up in it were moved here 52 million years yes, ago? Yes, that was, four, that was 490,000 years ago that the galactic ascension machine was done. What was done before that is these planets were moved around like big chess pieces and teleported to far points away from sentience where there nothing existed. So that it, the timeline incursions took a very long time to create a, a massive pulse of a time wave. And it wouldn't, it wouldn't affect blank Acacia record worlds because it was looking for erasures for DNA signatures that were related to the original erasures. So they would be teleporting these planets, but at the same time Earth, which was the grandest prize in the universe, was being teleported back into these major populated areas to act as a trap planet to lure people onto it to er- literally erase timelines or to erase the ascended masters of other worlds. So Earth was being used as a weapon at that point? Absolutely. 
I've described that in the in the Lance the Lance White interviews as well as the interviews on on um, walking and energy. I described specifically how the type of warfare on a on a galactic level. I mean, we're not talking troops and guns. We're talking planets used as traps to lure souls into a reincarnation cycle, so that they could be change their DNA on a soul level by mass investing souls from another planet who are dark energy programmed or light energy programmed or war programmed and thus your species has that in your DNA and you must follow that lineage or figure out your free world way to get out of it. All the while your your energy is being deceived by its basic free will since the layers of reality are being changed so you're trapped and trapped by a belief system and a reality that you can't break out of unless you choose to be a consciousness explorer and reclaiming all your sovereign free will. Hmm. Extraordinary. Twelve times Earth was, tra was teleported? Correct. And each yeah. time it was nearly killed when it was teleported. And the 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 beings that we're dealing with on this planet, were they, were they always responsible for the teleportation or were there different groups doing no, it? No, no. They, they would manipulate the other light and dark beings to do it for them. Mm -hmm. They're puppeteers. Mm. They want to stay one degree of separation and use people's free will through propaganda and influence to do the work for them because the karma goes to that lineage. Mm. Quite the trend. Master manipulation on, on a galactic scale because they are the ones that are challenging the prime creator. So when when the Earth was brought here and, and this whole solar system was quarantined along with, with other planets that were involved in this exercise, <laughs> it, it, it forced the action just to exist in a little corner of this galaxy. Correct. And it, it unified the light and the dark beings to resolve this because entire lineages of angel and, and light and dark spirits were being eliminated too. If you eliminate an entire species through timeline genocide, those angelic or demonic or light or dark species that are associated with them disappear too. Mm. Affecting the whole of creation. Absolutely. So it's not exactly Star Wars as in um, you know, large ships. Although in Star Wars there's the, there's the planetary sized ship, the Death Star, which is a fairly symbolic in, in, the, in the whole, fairly important in the whole symbology of the Star Wars series, which is, is, which is really indicating, you know, warfare on a galactic scale, but and although it was soft disclosure, it wasn't that, um, wasn't that specific as to describe the reality, which is what you're describing something quite different. So what, 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 Star, what Star Wars did was brought in the metaphysical to science fiction. Mm -hmm. And that's the big soft disclosure of Star Wars. The fact that the Jedi yeah. actually had that, uh, you know, those mental abilities and that connection. Well, metaphysical, let's just call it metaphysical. Mm -hmm. Because it is, it, is a t it is a movie with all, all sorts of books that are added on that are people that are highly creative and procreative people that in some sense are doing their own soft disclosure because their creativity is reaching into creation itself. We live in a reality where we can create our realities, but there, there's a facade reality that gives us belief structures we're born into. And until we confront those belief structures and move the energetic charges from them, as well as our soul investment over many thousands of lifetimes to reclaim our free will, the facade is, is a real wall. You know, if you're looking at a, at a green screen, on a, you know, with a news reporter standing in front of a weather map, you know it's a green screen. But if you were outside and someone created an illusion of a wall, until you physically touched it, you would never know it was an illusion. And that's, and your belief structure would make it real. It's really easy to deceive the eyes, really easy to deceive the senses. And we are a sensory being with all the five senses intertwined to a sixth sense that's been deceived to see only the five senses. So our facade reality we made real, and that's the layers of domination and control coming in at the cultural level, at the science level, at the spiritual level, making sure that the facade is believed into reality. Mm. Yeah, the, with that, that's the conclusion that, that I've come to, that we've been tricked into manifesting this reality. Absolutely, we yeah, have. We have. And that was the entire point of reading the 54 million year timeline war 
you know, for the vast majority of people that are having a difficult time with it, well, you're still paying attention to the material because something in it is nagging at you. There is one piece you need out of the concept. It may not even be the entire concept, and for others it is just the concept of, of itself that unravels. Like for KP scenario, you know, he needed to, to know about the ancestral release at the end, but he also needed to know that there were beings out there that are working with him that he already knew, as well as the journey he's doing is very old and is resolving many, many spiritual things that he's gone through in other lifetimes where the I am self is trapped somewhere else and using the dream field of Earth through one degree of separation to say, I'm with you, brother. Mm. And it sounds to me like KP's, the final part of KP's journey when he returns to Hawaii, he'll be able to have that final party with you guys because you'll probably still be there. That's correct. <laughs> so KP sounds like a big party in Hawaii too. Uh, pardon me, I didn't catch that last bit. <laughs> well, I was just saying, you, you, Andrew actually uh, sort of asked you to have a, a ceremony oh, with yeah. the ancestors yeah. before you left the continental United States and then repeat it when you yeah. get to Hawaii. And if, if he in the group is still there, it'll be, it'll be them too. Yes. Well, yeah, have my own... Rest. Yeah, <laughs> a big luau, you know. It's like, uh, That's right. yeah. I just, I just. Uh, well, I don't know how long. I mean, you, you folks are going to be there, but uh, we're moving here. It's just, it's just. Um, yeah, I need, the the important part of my, the important thing for me, there's a, there's a few key places that I feel I need to go before I do the final quarter of the infinity and a couple key places that I will be going. And um, so I, I know that it needs to be completed, as we would say, in perfection. Um, in perfection meaning as, as I'm guided or as I'm you know, perceiving it from uh, the higher guidance. And uh, so, you know, we'll just go and do it. And there's the connections that are being made are just, I mean, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm continually thrilled and and just amazed and surprised in, in some ways, but knowing that these are going to continue. And uh, I'm just really, uh, really looking forward to the, to the, you know, the party here before I leave and then the parties when, uh, when we get back to Hawaii. Um, so, um, so it's, it's going to be fun. So no matter where we are, we'll all be participating in that party, uh, and um, uh, besides which, I have a Costco membership, so I'm able to get nice cakes and good meat and things like that for people <laughs> for parties. So, mm -hmm. party supplies will be available. Uh, and uh, but yeah, I think that the the thing that really, you know, when Andrew, uh, when I, the last time I called and I got onto a, uh, accidentally was on the, uh, I think it was the 25th of July. Uh, when I first, uh, Andrew first mentioned this, uh, uh, the really the grand scope of this journey, uh, that was when it really started to, to connect what was really going on and, and um, uh, you know, the complete picture. So, uh, so all I can say is we're going we're gonna to continue and we wanna, I want to thank everyone who has, come along in, in whatever way it is um, and just, just continue to, to send your light and love and whatever you want to send, uh, just uh, continue that and we're all, we're all on this journey together. That's the key point that I realized shortly after starting it was this is just, this is not my personal, my own personal journey, but it includes now, you know, millions of beings uh, traveling together and we'll have this. We'll have a. We'll have a Chicago or New York size uh, delegation by the time, by the time we get back to Hawaii. So um, let's let's go for it. <laughs> yeah, fantastic. Yeah, because yeah, uh, I remember I remember when you first mentioned that you needed to do this. You felt really moved to do this trip because I know that the, the work you did in Hawaii was just by how you felt. 
and and there you were, yeah. in, you know, in Hawaii, you you know, literally had to ship your car back to the U.S. And these are no small things, you know. It was, it's a big thing to be doing what you're doing, and to be moved to do something of that scale has to have a big reason behind it. And and as it's now being revealed, it's a very big reason. Yes, it definitely was, and I, I, you know, I'd never had the sense before that I was done. I mean, basically, the phase that I was in in Hawaii clearly was over, done, and uh, I that that happened maybe back in December twelfth, twelve twelve. I kind of knew that I was over. It was over, and then uh, maybe a couple months later, I really got that. Um, yeah, it would. There would. There would be a move coming up, and and in the next month or so, I, I kind of got the approximate time that I needed to leave, and uh, started making arrangements and all this and all that. Um, and uh, so, yes, it was well, well worth whatever we had to go through to come over here. And uh, uh, it's really with with everyone else coming along with me via the blog or whatever. It's been. Uh, uh, a priceless journey, uh, and it continues. You can't put any value on it. It's just, it's a huge, it's a huge mission, and it's just, what can I say? I mean, it's just, I love it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we all love it. Mm. Now, it's been great to, great to, being along, to be along on the way, because everyone who's, who's been reading your blog and listening to your occasional interviews, you know, feels, feels like they're involved, I think, which is, which is great. And, and uh, you know, really look forward to hearing the end. You know, we'll have to have to try and do a uh, a broadcast when you're back in Hawaii. And, Absolutely, and, and put Absolutely. it out there so everyone else can share in it as well. That'll be tremendous. Absolutely. So, uh, and for those people that have been following your blog or those people that are listening now, there's a little shaman's trick you can do to help send JP some dream energy or some lightning energy. All roads in the United States are interlinked through sacred geometry. And you can use that to your advantage. You can get a piece of paper and write your blessings and greetings mm -hmm. to KP and his journey. And you go out to any road, and you simply put that note under a little rock, and you let it be there. And that energy will find its way to him by one degree of separation. Wow. Oh boy. There you have it. Well, thank you. Thank you. Mm. Well, thank you much. And, uh, yes, we'll just continue. We, we, you know, we'll just continue as, as guidance uh, as guidance says, and 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 uh, uh, what can I say? I think we're just we're we're really it really is all of us, and uh, so that makes it a lot easier too for me because I, I I realize that this is not just my own personal thing, and it's uh, um, for all of us. So it is it's for everyone's benefit. It's for everyone's benefit. Mm, tremendous. Look, it's really, it's really fascinating to have have this kind of information revealed. Me, you know, you're reaching back through over 50 million years of history, and and helping people, you know, bringing people out, literally of of more or less a, a trap, and fantastic. And so I had a feeling there was something really, really uh, important going on when you were felt moved to do what you did, and. Uh, now we're getting that information. Yeah. It's really, really, uh, it's, you know, it's it's actually a, a real a real privilege to actually be be part of KP. It really is. Well, it's it's you know we're all working. We're like Andrew said. You know we're we're doing this for humanity, and this is our if you want to call it service. But it's almost like it's such a joyful service that it just feels like, wow. How, yeah. I mean, it's like we're we're all having such a great time. And it's kind of like that joy that, that to me, a, a very important part of it is just being in joy and following the joy, following the, 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 the passion, the guidance, and, and um, you know, and sharing what, what we go through really helps to connect everyone. And so we'll just keep it up. Mm -hmm. Well, we'll follow along as you go. Please call in to the shows if you're if you're around when it's when it when it works out when the synchronicity oh, kicks yeah. in, yeah. and uh, we'll be right there with you to the you know through the, the the send off ceremony in the United States and then you know the final final party in Hawaii, 
And <laughs> any idea for a feeling of, of uh, what are you feeling about, you know, when that final move to Hawaii will take place? Is it going to be a month, <laughs> a month or a couple of months? I have a feeling it, it's probably on the order of a month or a month and a half um, ballpark. Um, I have probably a, maybe a, a week or 10-day trip coming up and possibly one more, maybe about a maybe a week trip before I head to the southwest. So it's, it does appear to be about, I would say, probably a month and a half. Um, so we'll say maybe the end of October or early November, I'd be back in the, um, on the islands. But that's just, you know, following guidance one moment at a time. That can always change. Mm. Tremendous. Well, KP, we're, we're just coming up to the uh, end of the first hour. And perfect. It's, uh, yeah, it's perfect timing. Really glad you could drop in. The timing's worked out exactly as it needed to, and the information yeah. about your trip is now out there. And and you know, I just know that the support you'll get for the rest of the trip, rest of the journey, will be exactly what you need it to be. Well, maybe uh, would you mind if I just mention here the the title of the blog in case people don't know? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, go for it. Well, it's Kawila Pele. dot wordpress. dot com. And that first word is spelled K-A-U-I-L-A-P-E-L-E, -E, Kawila Pele. So if they want, if you want to follow along, that's that's where to check out, check it out. Excellent. And, then and thank you much. It does include little uh, little videos that you shoot along the way and just put up oh. on the site. So we're getting a running commentary so as you go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's great. Thank you, YouTube. Thank you, YouTube and iPhone and uh, um, WordPress. Oh, so. Brilliant stuff. Really brilliant, the way that we com communicate so easily in, you know, yeah. to, to large numbers of people with uh, you know, really quite simple tools these days. So KP, because I mean, just in case Aloha. people are running, everyone refers to you just as just as KP most of the time, because Kuila Pele is a bit hard for people to get their <laughs> mouths around at times. KP, yeah, did you? KP is, is it. So thank you so much for dropping in. Is there any, Andrew, is there anything, um, any final final points you wanted to bring out with uh, KP's journey? Um, good luck on your trip. Thousands and billions of people are in the 3D world following you, listening to your words. You started a blog quite some time ago, and it went from a blog to something procreative and helpful to some millions of people that were looking to express you followed your karma, your soul wisdom. You're doing the right thing, brother. Keep on trucking. Well, thank you much. Thank you so much. And uh, same to both of you. And continue the I, – I really love the Galactic History shows. Uh, and I really feel this is a, uh, uh, an essential service to, to humanity uh, on all levels. Uh, this is the time for all this to come out. And um, – and for people to connect with what's really going on and what needs to be done. So uh, with that, I'll say aloha to all of you, and uh, thank you again. Aloha, aloha, Ka aloha Kapi. Oh, aloha. Speak to you soon. Whew. Tremendous. Great timing. Perfect. Absolutely. Beautiful yeah. call. Yep. Beautiful soul, KP. You know, he's a classic example of somebody who stood up into his power and his power said, put a WordPress together, put a blog together, share this information, connect and communicate to the people that are the movers and shakers of that time, promote them, start a blog, get people communicating, get people talking. And that's what he did, to the point where they're all talking enough that his higher will spirit came to the realization he needed to leave Hawaii and to do his grand journey. Yeah, that's uh, really, really following one one's instinct, which is really, really important. I think at this at this right. time in history, I think uh, following follow your nose, follow your gut, follow your heart, because that's right. that's where the real message about your particular trajectory is to be found inside you at this moment of time. So, with that thought in mind, we'll take a 
a quick break, a bathroom break, with my favourite piece of music because I really feel like it now. And uh, we will see you in about four minutes. Cheers. Hi, and welcome back. That that uh, that music for me is just like just long breaths in and out. It's very very pleasant to listen to. Um, the second part of the show here, we actually have another guest with us today, and. This is someone that's uh, very special to all of us who has been here in this country um, pushing on with her work of, of fixing the world. Uh, good morning, Hope. How are you? Have to unmute Good you. morning, everyone. Yep, sorry. Good morning, everyone. <laughs> I am doing wonderful and truly enjoying my time here and the people that I have been meeting and the amazing changes uh, that I see unfolding right before my eyes because of the work that we're doing. Yeah, Hope, we've done a couple of updates uh, which uh, have gee, at least two updates and, and been updating your progress on the shows, but things are happening so much every day for you. Um, I'm almost feeling like we should be doing one every two days instead of every four days. <laughs> Yes, uh, um, I think about things in terms of that was only 24 hours ago and the amount of things that have happened in that 24 hours is enough activity to take up an entire week. That's how intensive this trip has been and successful as well. Mm. Excellent. Now one of the big, uh, big bits of news that you had for us was that uh, the first meeting you had in Sydney um, included some elders from one of the Maori tribes that actually live in, in on the eastern seaboard of this country. And that was quite significant for you. It was very significant. Um, it was an incredible experience because we went, we had a Fix the World meeting that was hosted um, by the Maori people. And while there, the meeting went so well, we Fix the World as an organization and as our mission for what we're trying to do, we received an official blessing from the Maori people, and in addition to that, um, myself and Pepe, we were personally adopted into the Maori tribe, given Maori names, and connected to the land. After the meeting, we went and visited a sacred Maori site where their ancestors are buried, and it was just an absolutely heartfelt, moving experience. Um, in this case, I believe this is our first connection on this level with indigenous peoples as an organization. So that was really very significant to me and to the Fix the World organization because that's why we're here, to, to join everyone together in a common cause to save this planet. Mm. It's fantastic you made that connection to, um, it sounds like it's going to be more than one indigenous group too, to, to the Maori groups, but, and, and you've got another, another meeting today with uh, some Aboriginal groups as yes. well. We will be, um, later on today we'll be traveling and we'll be staying with an Aboriginal shaman uh, who is representative of many Aboriginal people in this area and so I'm really looking forward to that also, to make that connection. Mm. And you've been holding meetings but in every location you've moved to, you've had, had people coming to the meetings, interacting with you, talking about projects, talking about you know their own their own personal journeys, and uh, it actually sounds incredibly, uh, incredibly intense. But you you and Peppy seem to be just going with it, and uh, I haven't detected any real tiredness in either of you. You know, <laughs> through the whole trip, so it must be incredibly energizing as well. It is, and Happy, I, I'm actually Happy a little. Sorry, Andrew. Happy is staying, Peppy. Bad joke, sorry. <laughs> Peppy is saying Peppy, yes. Yeah. I didn't quite hear you. <laughs> yeah, the lo yeah, the uh, the joke was lost a little in the in the in the somewhat poor connection, but yeah. Yeah, we do get that. Yeah, Peppy and Peppy actually does say Peppy. Peppy is is just um, a rock for hope. Uh, yes. so great great job, Peppy. Doing fantastic work. I couldn't do it without her, that's for sure. And I also just need to mention the rest of the Fix the World Council, 
um, who are not with us on this trip, but who are working diligently behind the scenes uh, to keep us connected, to keep the operations running while Pepe and I are out on the road. And that would be Val, Gans, and Angela. Um, all five of us have just dedicated our hearts and our lives to this mission. So I want to make sure that they get mentioned too. Mm. Uh, absolutely. And one of, the, one of the things that's come up in the last week, Hope, and uh, I haven't had a chance to discuss this with you actually till now, but I, I will because it's something people need to be aware of. In the teleseminar between Andrew and Till last week, um, one of the things that was strongly put forward was uh, using Teal's consciousness raising artwork on billboards and buses as soon as possible, oh, as widely wow. as possible. And uh, I, I know I, I strongly suspect one of the best ways to promote that would be through your Fix the World site because of the the project the project based nature and the fact that you're actually including crowdsourcing in the facilities. And because we already had a couple of offers of people who are involved in the printing industry uh, to support that. So if we can put the word out there, I think we'll get both monetary support and direct support for for the physical process involved, which is you know literally printing posters and mounting them um, through your Fix the World site. And you might want to just talk about the launch of that site for a minute too, for those that might not be aware of it. Yes, absolutely. So um, just to go back to the beginning for anyone who's tuning in fresh and hasn't heard anything about our organization, uh, Fix the World is uh, it's an organization that's based on humanitarian projects. Um, and these projects run the gamut for all different areas of the human endeavor. So we've got technology, spirituality, education, food supply, the list goes on and on. And we have just launched a new website, which is a pretty complex platform. It's actually several websites rolled into one. And what it is, is it's a place where we've just created the space for people to come and join the community and join up with different groups. Um, it has functions very much like Facebook, so you can friend people on the Fix the World platform, send private messages, and schedule events and hold, um, not webinars yet, but you can hold events like Skype calls and meetings, and we are trying to incorporate in some webinar technology as well. Um, so basically what it is, is a way, it's, it's a matchmaking platform where people can come and meet others that share their visions and network and organize and put all of their ideas into projects. And for those people who, you know, maybe they need just a little bit of assistance in trying to figure out how to organize your idea into a project, we will be having uh, different courses on there to help people teach themselves to walk through that basic business process where they can create a business plan and a project schedule and cost out a budget and also learn how to present their projects in a way that will um, make it easy to communicate their ideas to the people that would like to support them. So we have some of those tools built in as, as well as a project gallery where you can present your project to the world. And then we have an additional platform that is uh, for crowd, called Crowd Ventures. And so once your project is organized and ready to go, you can put that project up on the Crowd Ventures website and promote that to people in whatever community that it is that you're on uh, via social media, Facebook, LinkedIn, blogging, whatever it might be. Promote that campaign out there and raise funds to fund your project from the people on the planet. And crowdfunding has been very successful. Um, as, a, as a matter of fact, that's the reason why I'm here now, is because I put together a crowdfunding campaign and multiple people, a couple hundred people, pitched in a little bit of money so that we can raise the money that we needed to come here and do this work. So it seems to be one of the most successful ways to fund your projects or ideas um, because there has been you know, some difficulty getting funding, that seems to be everyone's main problem is finding the funding and the all traditional ways of finding those investments or supporters, uh, you know, a lot of the money seems to be drying out in those areas. So the wealth is in the people and this is just one avenue of funding projects is through crowdfunding. Mm. And you've had a wealth of support 
on your way around on this trip, you've been essentially. I don't think you've had to. Have you have you actually had to stay at a motel at any point in the trip at this stage? No, I have not. I'm actually uh, uh, at this moment. Um, th it's been an interesting trip because it's been a mix of business meetings with pretty high-level business advisors and then also holding Fix the World community meetings um, in people's homes. So we've really run the gamut of the different types of people that we've been meeting and staying with. And currently, um, we just had another day-long meeting with another business advisor on the Sunshine Coast. And I am currently speaking to you from a very, very large, amazing, beautiful house. So <laughs> yeah, sounds good. Sounds good. Look, one thing we must mention too about your website is that the one of the other aspects of the website is a specific part set aside for communities to actually have a presence so that they can link up with one another. Yes. It's quite important that one. So communities like the Conjola community that you that you visited uh, in New South Wales. Um, about a week ago, uh, was it a week ago now? It seems like a year. Um, <laughs> had, a, had a fantastic time, hooked up with Lisa Harrison and and uh, John Van Newton and and various other people to, you know, check the site out and get to know the people. Um, another another great little event in the trip, and also the Ecotel, the Ecotel community not far away from there, and all of these communities are finding one another. Uh, more with you know more and more speed and and through the uh, connection on the website we'll be able to go international yes absolutely and and what I want to say also and this is really important is I'd like to express to the people what has been happening um, in these community meetings on an energetic level um, so basically the format is I talk a little bit about my background and then the background of the Fix the World organization and, and talk about the new website. Then we do a group activity where we, we break off into groups and um, try to go through a mock project together to learn what it's like to work together. And then we do a round robin of sharing where each person has a, a space created for them to say, this is the vision that I've been given. This is what I want to do to help this planet. And then from there, the networking really kicks off because you, you find that there's someone who's working in, in um, permaculture. There's another person who's working in permaculture that they haven't met before. Now they're meeting each other. They're networking. They're organizing. And basically, you're just finding the right people to work with. On an energetic level, what I'm seeing is many people who have been individual, who have felt isolated um, during this time as their consciousness is increasing, people are given visions. They're given gifts and basically ideas of what they can do. And these are internal inspirations. And as they come out and this creativity is occurring, they need a little bit of support um, of figuring out how to organize it so that they can manifest it and anchor it in our, in our reality. It's very, very important. And they also need to network with like-minded people. That's exactly what's happening in these meetings. And some of the stuff that we're talking about is very sensitive information. Um, it's not just a good idea that would be widely supported by everyone everywhere. These are ideas that have, have a history of being suppressed. Ideas like free energy devices and things that cure cancer that go up against big pharma. So we have this opportunity for people to meet in each other's living rooms in a safe environment so that we can share those visions, we can organize together, and this is exactly what we're calling, uh, it's like we're facilitating a global evolution uh, in these meetings at a grassroots level, and this is how the people are going to be rising up in their own consciousness so that we can change this planet and make these things happen. So it's quite magical to be right in the midst of it and to be able to see it, because I personally, look forward, you know, maybe a few years in the future when things are up and running and things have changed and I just see that this is the beginning right here in these meetings uh, where we give people the sovereign space to, you know, claim their own free will, stand in their own sovereignty and use their creativity and anchor it in reality. Mm. Yeah, your, your very first uh, meeting of that kind here on your trip um, was that the Melbourne meeting? Was that was the very first group meeting that you had, or was there yes, one before that? Yeah, that was 
That was quite magical and, and as you say, talk about networking, there was about 20 people and uh, at the point in the meeting where we started to speak about our what we felt our individual journeys were as soon as, as soon you know as soon as that that section of it had completed there were people in the room making a beeline for one another mm -hmm. to say hey you know I, i'm into raw food too and you know we need to talk and and there were, i could just hear the conversations going on in several places in the room and you know that that's just that's one on one direct networking and hope that's just a, a fantastic thing that you you're doing for everybody making that uh, or you know creating the space for that to actually happen Andrew I wanted to ask you um, you know we were just talking to KP before the break and 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 what looked like an interesting just an interesting road trip he felt compelled to do has turned out to be something on a rather a huge and significant scale I'm just wondering is the journey that hopes on of a similar kind has it got its roots back in history or, or is it just a the, the the mission that hope came here to fulfill um, it's a very very similar mission um, I'll take it. It's a very, very similar mission. Hold on, I got a bunch of winds blowing at me on the back porch here. Um, it's, a, it's a similar mission. Hope Girl is also part of the broadcast organization that's known as Lookout Mountain, similar to you, and where you're broadcasting to the consciousness explorers that are in uh, timeline fallout shelters. And it's something that's being done on a mass, mass scale. And part of Hope's tour, the reason she is in Australia right now, is the last hope for Earth was the Dreamtime Grid of Australia. Um, in 1616, when the Dreamtime Grid of Australia was cracked and the spiritual invasion came, um, as I spoke about Australia being an actual timeline incursion vessel, it can actually, the entire continent can leave the planet and go anywhere in the universe. It's vital that Hope went there first to recreate the energetic connections to those people that were forced out of the timeline grid in and around Australia so that the spiritual invasion could take over at the dream world level. And what Hope Girl is doing is reconnecting those individual souls that part of their soul shards are still locked in a timeline fallout shelter. And her presence is merely a light that shows those shards there's a way back to their original I Am Presence self. Wow. wow. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Andrew. Um, I'd, like to sh I'd like to share um, for anyone listening just... I knew that I was supposed to come to Australia. I knew that at the beginning of this year. I wasn't quite sure when I would end up here. I felt a deep longing and calling. And then when the time was right, everything fell into place. And as I've been here on this journey, personally, on a daily basis, I clear my space, I tune in, and I just try to really observe exactly what's happening here because I know that what I'm doing here is going to affect great change in the lives of the individual people and that there's a much bigger plan for what I'm doing here. And a Andrew, you just really explained it. So I really want to thank you for that because it gives me incredible strength to continue on with the rest of this mission. Well, all the members of Lookout Mountain are coming back to reality. And I'm filled with tears at this moment because 38 million years ago, both me, you, and Chris were in a timeline incursion, and we were in Mars trying to do a massive broadcast to the universe to warning that creation was in danger. And there were a group of uh, both light and dark entities who didn't want us to do anything. They said that, that it was the free will of the universe, that if creation was to be uncreated, that it, it should be stopped. And there was a, a physical intervention to prevent us to giving a warning that creation was in danger, and the beings that were one, two, and three degrees of separation of the prime creator were still in the, the ideology of non-interference, that the micro-beings must do stand up and use their free will to stop this anti-creation effect. And um, there was a scenario where both Hope and Chris um, were murdered and removed from their fallout timeline fallout shelters. And um, me, and along with a number of others, um, the, the Lookout Mountain crew, which was reduced to less than a few thousand, had to split ourselves into a million beings and spread out to a million worlds and risk our entire divinity path of creation to make sure that all of creation heard the words. And uh, we're coming back together now in such a way that no matter what they try, no matter how hard they try, 
They will not stop us. They will not stop us. I'm really feeling that. I, I have to say I've been feeling that on this whole journey, that we are unstoppable and that we are, you know, divinely protected and I just keep going with the flow of the energy. I mean, on this trip alone, we've tried to make plans and a schedule, but it's just been the guide that's been given to me to just leave it as open as we can for the energy to flow. So sometimes someone will ask me, what are you doing tomorrow or two days from now? And I'll just say, there's no way I can possibly tell you. Because <laughs> there's that's no way to... It is for me. Yeah, because there's no way that we can we can really put a rigid plan on this trip because we need to let the energy flow. That's the only way to do this. I'm 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 somewhat speechless uh, yet again, um, because the the connection that that uh, that both uh, uh, Hope and I have, and and that we both have with Andrew, has been so direct and compelling. I, I really um, I knew that there there had to be something really going on there, and 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 what you've just brought out absolutely confirms that and absolutely confirms why I'm here in Australia and why Hope's here in Australia. And mm -hmm. the, why there's a big connection of Australians yeah, well, in the world. Yeah, Lisa it's not, Harrison coming out. All of those Australians, Scott Bartlett, all of those Australians that are fighting the facade of reality and saying, it's fake. Yeah, very very strong crew down here, and and uh, once we've once we're finished with hope, there's there's something else that I'll bring out about a little little project that we've got on going on at the moment that I want to promote. Uh, that's that's going to hit Facebook later in the week, but we'll we'll leave that issue aside for the moment. But yeah, look, there's a very strong contingent down here. Um, you know, when we were working on the courtesy notices program earlier in the year. Um, with uh, you know Heather Tucci and Lisa and uh, all the other guys on Lisa's network, um, we freaked the hell out of the powers that were, as as they say, just by the sheer amount of energy that was released from down here. And uh, yeah, Australia is is appearing to be pretty important in in the, this global movement that we're all a part of. Chris, you remember when I was telling you about the, the entire vessel that's Australia, that the continent can literally unmanifest and be on other worlds, that it is a conscious exploration vehicle? Oh, yes. I haven't forgotten that one, Andrew. <laughs> that, was, that, that looms oh, large. Would you, would you care to recall, recall some of that for hope in your intonation and vibration? And there's a very, very specific reason, because this applies to Hope Girl, as well as the people that she's going to be meeting in the next few weeks. This is all about a one degree of separation presentation. Well, the consciousness, you know, the, this entire continent is a consciousness exploration vessel. It can leave physically, it can leave, it can leave etherically, uh, it, and, and it requires that the, the, the people of this continent be in unity consciousness in order for this, for this consciousness exploration vehicle to actually function. And I actually think part of your journey Hope is to is to help bring us to unity consciousness uh, on this continent as one people. Mm. Think of it as a grapevine. You have pods of grapes. You are seeding the grapevines so that a bunch of grapevines can come together and be the entire grapevine. You know, it starts somewhere. It starts with a seed, and you are planting the seeds so those individual soul seeds can recover their soul shards. On the continent of Australia now, there are over 900 consciousness fallout shelters. In each and every city you go to, you are freeing those trapped souls. You're doing it on a dream time level, because your soul has a specific DNA light body pattern that is the key to unlocking the timeline fallout shelters block code. Okay? Yes. Every step you take, you are helping people reconnect to their soul shards. Hmm. Again, wow. I'd like to just speak to that, too. Um, when I'm at these meetings, I mean, I literally have, I've had a few days that have been 
18 hour days of from the moment I wake up to the moment I go to sleep, I am talking, 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 or I have people who come to me who want to talk to me. And the energy, uh, like I'll, I'll give, I'll hold a meeting and I'll speak about my, my story and then people start to open up. And when they come, they come up to me and they start engaging in a conversation with me and they sort of latch on. And the energy I feel from them, is, it, it's as if they have been in a cage for all of this time and I'm the first person they've had a conversation with in the, the last however many years of their life. That's the kind of energy that comes from these beings when, when they come up and speak to me. And this has been happening back to back to back. I've met over 100 people, I'd say at this point probably maybe 150 in a week. And those are individual people that I've had conversations with and they've all been the same the same vibe, like I've just been released from, from jail and I can finally express myself for the first time. So that really helps to solidify that for me. Thank you so much again. You're welcome. Yeah. Here's a great karmic gift for you. Before you return before you return to the States, you know, there's gonna be a place that you stop and you're gonna to connect to the original unity consciousness drive and it's a drive system, it's a physical system that uh, has the remnants of the last unity consciousness. And it's going to be like a dream world inside a dream world where you connect to the old unity consciousness and it's going to be a template for you to present, present to the United States when you do your U.S. tour, your Canada tour, your Europe tour. And that template is reconnecting each continent to the unity consciousness drive that is Australia. Mm -hmm. Who? <laughs> well, you just gave me the order. No, you're not alone in this. <laughs> I know that you're not alone in this. For each person you help uncage, a thousand more wake up. And for every thousand that wake up, there's another million waiting to be incarnated here to help. Hmm. <sighs> Pebble in the pond, Hope. <laughs> right. Very, very big pebble. That's tremendous. There was something so synchronistic about the way that Hope's tour was funded, Andrew, it, it, because, you know, she, it, she really felt the need to get here quickly. And although she didn't quite make it to the initial meeting at Conjola, she, she made it to a second meeting, which was just import, just as important. And uh, the 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 burst of energy that came out of almost miraculously out of nowhere it just it just shouted at me that this was supposed to happen I remember her doing the banking revocations and then a week later she did a donation drive and was on her way mm. yep that's the way that it worked that energy from your field and the field said here you go here's your journey just mm. be willing to love the journey well, I think we're all loving the journey, actually. It's been fantastic, fantastic to observe. And, and, and everyone that I've spoken to that's, that's been, with her, been with Hope has, has had a great experience each time. And there's another week or so to go, Hope? Yeah, a, a, little, a little more than a week. So, um, goodness, I just can't wait to see what happens next. <laughs> Yeah, well, there's there's still, still some significant things to happen. So, look, we'll catch up to you next week on this show again, hey? And uh, um, we we'll just do a final broadcast from Australia. Excellent. With you. It's great to have you in the same, same time zone, actually, even. You know, we've managed to be in the same room for, for some time, but um, at least you're not, you know, 12 hours distant and 12,000 miles distant. <laughs> does Absolutely. Make, does make it a little easier to be this way, but um, look, everyone that's that's uh, that's met with hope so far has has been inspired and and moved, and uh, that that is still going on. And Andrew, it's really interesting that hope's connected so quickly with the indigenous groups here, who are obviously absolutely absolutely um, part of the the unity consciousness aspect of hope's tour. Absolutely. They are the ones that are one degree of separation of every fallout timeline fallout shelter. They know that they're locked in there, and those are these ancestors that can't ascend 
and those are also the ancestors that are trying to teach through the dream world of unity consciousness, of brotherhood and sisterhood, and the connection to the Earth Mother. So when Hope Girl arrives with the consciousness exploration codes to unlock the fallout shelter, it was just exactly as you said, caged people that are now released. Hmm. Yeah. It's like the, the completion of the soul code that, that I have. Hope's purpose is to unlock the fallout shelters that are around the world. And that's the Save the World campaign. Give them hope. Hmm. <laughs> Look, the synchronicities actually began well over a year ago for you, Hope. And, and you've just been uh, projected into a completely different path. I mean, you know, 18 months ago, you were still employed in, in the company that you, you, you actually I, kind of ran aground on. I know. I, I, when I think about that, that I was sitting in a cubicle and, you know, crunching numbers and, and just in that world. And here I am now. I mean, you, I never would have guessed it back then. But it's amazing. The other thing, too, that's amazing is, um, you know, like this, this particular trip, this is the first one, and um, I have been seeing this, visualizing it, manifesting it, intending it for almost a year, and to actually be here doing it, um, it's just such validation of, of the power of, you know, stepping into your own power and manifesting things and intending things in your life, because it's, it's just beautiful to see. But like, yes, we can do anything. We can make anything happen. And, and a moment ago, Andrew spoke of your American tour, Canadian tour, European tour. Uh, this is just, what you're doing at the moment is just the beginning. Absolutely. Yeah, I think, and that's, it's wonderful that, that uh, Andrew said it in that order as well, because the next tour that I, that I feel coming on is the U.S. tour. Um, so now I know where I'm going after the U.S., I guess Canada and then Europe. <laughs> No doubt. Right. There, there are over 123,000 timeline fallout shelters still in the, still left in the world with some of the most ancient soul shards waiting to be reconnected. In each step in your journey, you're going to see more powerful, more powerful, more powerful people come forward and say, we want the truth and we want freedom. And all you have to do is enjoy your journey and continue to promote what Hope Girl is, save the world. <laughs> yeah, fantastic. And speaking of speaking of wanting truth, I, I think I I just feel uh, moved to actually mention this while Hope's on air, and she's aware of this already because the um, the article was actually mentioned on the on uh, the repurposing show earlier this week, which is one of probably the most major newspaper in this country put out a full page ad and um, I'm just gonna I just want to read out what they put on here because it, it just blows me away every time I read it it's just a few paragraphs and it's essentially a statement from the from the paper saying that that they are truth seekers so I'll just I'll just read that word for word here it says seek out the truth this thought has guided generations of journalists to the core of a story by following the money, they, ex they expose illicit favours, corruption and behaviours that tear at the heart of democracy. Our journalists have a proud history of asking the question that needs to be asked. What of news organisations? Does the source of their revenue and profit affect how they seek out the facts and present them? Why should the money and power behind a news organisation influence how it presents the news? At the age, the City Morning Herald and the Australian Financial Review independence are nourished, cherished and fiercely defended. Our journalists pursue the truth without fear or favour. They don't bow to the rich or powerful, whether discussing, dissecting education, economics or big national schemes like the National Broadband Network. They remain unrestricted by money, corporate direction or bias. We know you have many choices when it comes to your news. All we suggest is that when choosing, do as we do, seek out the truth. Now, this was a very, very bold statement for a news organization to make because we know how much corporate influence goes on in the newspaper and, and right throughout the media. And they are standing up and, and we were dissecting this saying, who are they actually trying to speak to? They're not talking to the other media and they're not really talking to the public at large because the public at large is largely unaware. 
I, we came to the conclusion they were talking to us. They were talking to the truth seekers and they were saying, come to us and ask us what truths you want because we're now ready to actually put them out there for you. Chris, okay. Chris I'd love to actually contribute to that. I sure. didn't actually read that paper, mm -hmm. but um, as I've probably expressed to a few people, I did currency trading for a number of years. Mm -hmm. And what I would say is that that news organization is trying to eradicate the, the editors and the hardcore journalists within the organization to conform to you know what the mainstream is wanting to do so the actual journalists in that might actually be standing up for their own paper so to speak standing up for the for the for the position of the people that they want to actually serve yeah you know the person yeah that's, journalism. yeah that's exactly the message we're getting from it so I hope uh, there's a little group formed formed again you know it's the Australians jumping in for boots and all um, we're, we're putting together a Facebook campaign and this is to all the people out there listening as well and it's the reason I mention it is that is that we're going to do a short sharp Facebook campaign starting later this week uh, and it's going to actually in part have a facility to uh, direct an email response to each person who likes it who likes the page and who 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 basically participates in a, just a, a very couple of questions, a questionnaire consisting just of a couple of questions, and as a result of that, if they so choose, it'll flick off a message to the editor of the Age, or the information the information um, uh, email address for the Age. W and we would like as many people as possible to drop into this Facebook page. It doesn't matter where you are in the world, and like it answer a couple of questions and flick off an email to the age because we're going to see them as soon as we feel that we've got enough numbers on that page we're going to go off and see the editor and we're going to give them a download and tell them what we want them to talk about and we're going to tell them basically just the first thing we want them to talk about which is what what the banks and the courts and the governments are doing uh, to us through the, the system of mortgages that they're using is around the planet not just here we're doing this is ultimately we're focused here because these guys have stood up and uh, we wanted to we want to structure the Facebook page and our approach in such the way that we do two things we call out the other media we're saying you know these guys are doing it what about you and and providing that example so that around the world people can go to their own media and say hey these guys down here down under you know little old Australia their media are standing up the people inside the media are coming forward and saying um, we're making a taking a an ethical position not a commercial position we want to serve the people so we, we just want to amplify this little burst of energy that's come from inside a newspaper unexpectedly and 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 kick it through the entire system because Andrew, you've been saying for some time that it, it, the key to it is the newspapers. Well, this might just be the key. It's the key is the newspapers. Um, the auditory is one thing of the news. It's controlled by etheric broadcasting that controls the vibration and intonation of the newscasters. In paper, it doesn't have vibration and intonation because you create it when you read it in your mind. So a true author of a journalism who puts their heartfelt truth discernment into an article is transferred through the reading and the creation process of the article. So even it just being in print and it barely being read changes the world. The fact that the Age Guardian, the Age newspaper put that there, it is what I call consciousness first strike attempts. We're challenging you reality. We're challenging you. Who takes up the challenge now? What Chris has just said is you're going to make a presentation to them. What you're telling them is, you said put up. We're saying we're putting up or you're shutting up. Yep. We're finding out if you're truth. Because we're going to continue doing what we do. And we're going to continue yelling as loud as we can yell and telling every person we can tell. And if you're a true newspaper for ethical truth, you will see that, that this movement has been going on for years, no matter how hard they've tried to stop it, destroy it, decipher it, it or, or create within it deception. It still goes, it still goes, and it creates new people who were in cubicles 18 months ago. Bingo. Yeah, it's, it's, it's consciousness awakening itself on this planet. Right. And this message came through very clearly to us. You know, one of one of the um, 
the the folk in our little group, Helen was was looking at this, and she said, she said someone at the age, someone inside this organisation is really upset. This is this is them expressing themselves, and we we suspect strongly, as Andre said, that the the journalists inside the newspaper are finally finally pushing against the, the corporate commercial control that they've all been experiencing as professional journalists. Because they, they are people. They are people too. And they, they want the truth out there. That's why they became journalists. And they've been frustrated. So somehow or another, they to, to have a full page ad in a paper like that, it has to get past a number of editorial reviews because it's expressing directly expressing the views of the paper itself. It's not just an advertisement for a client. So it must have taken some pressure from within to actually even get it on paper and published. And uh, as soon as Rena brought it to our attention, we all went, whoa, something happening down at the age. And this newspaper is headquartered uh, about 20 minutes drive from me and most of the people in the group. And uh, it's it's just so close. We all sat back and said, we have to do something about this. So when the, the Facebook page is going to be called People's Media Watch, and uh, we, we, we need it to go viral, we need it to have, if possible, hundreds of thousands of likes, plus a comment, because we know the age will be looking at it. And... Uh, so there needs to be comments as well, and as, as I said, the, the intention is to have a couple of simple little questions there, and the first question is going to be, what truth would you like, you know, what truth would you like the age to actually publish? Well, I'm not sure exactly how we'll phrase it, we've got to review that, but uh, this is a very important uh, little project that we've got going down here, so it needs to have a, a short, sharp, viral campaign to get us in front of the most senior p people possible in that organisation to put our information to them uh, because they, they will um, they'll be in a position to really do something about it and because of the nature of the, what they've done, they've been so public about it, we can take that same ad to all the other media groups in this country and put it to them. We're saying the age is stepping up. You know, whether, you know, we, even, if, even if they don't really have the cojones to do it properly, uh, we're going to be going to the other media anyway and saying, you know, the age is stepping up. How about you guys? Who's going to who's going to print truth for us? Who's going to give the people the truth? So, going to be a really short, sharp, exciting time down here. So, hope, <laughs> keep an eye on it. I absolutely will. And if you would give me just a minute, I'd like to let everybody know for anyone who's in the. Uh, Gold Coast area. We will be having one more Fix the World meeting while I'm here. And I just wanted to give everyone the address of where that will be located. It's at uh, 337 Christine Avenue, Varsity Lake on the Gold Coast. And the date of the meeting is this Saturday, September 7th. And it starts at 6 p.m. and goes from 6 to 9 p.m. And we just ask that if everyone can bring a plate or some finger food or a drink or something along those lines. Uh, and the meetings are free. So if you'd like to come out and meet and network and experience the magic that's happening with the global evolution, come on down. <laughs> Any other events you want to speak about now for the rest of your trip, even if it's um, just locations? And times? At this, at, no, at this time, no. I've been doing the best that I can to keep the itinerary updated um, on the Hope Girl blog, but mostly because of some limited internet access and the intensity of the traveling that we've been doing, because we've literally been staying um, at one place almost every day, and we've just been moving and moving and moving. So internet's a little difficult. The easiest way for me to keep everyone updated is through my Facebook page, which is Hope More. I've been posting pictures and snippets of the trip in real time. So uh, please come on to Facebook and friend me if you haven't already, and you can follow our journey there. Fantastic, Hope. Really great work, and it's been a, a, an honor and a privilege to have you down under. <laughs> it's been so great being here, and part of me doesn't want to go home. <laughs> oh, you'll be back. You'll be back, and and you know we we will be able to hook up again in in October for the uh, the meeting down in Florida. You know, so make sure you do slot that into your schedule. Excellent. And uh, Andrew, did you want to add anything? 
because we're we've got just ten minutes to go on the show. So I think what I have to add is is for all those that are listening live and all those that are listening in the archives, you know, we had KP come on, Quiapelli come on in his journey across the United States and I'll hope hope girls journey across Australia. Who else is gonna step up? Who else is gonna leave their cubicle and do the same thing? Who's gonna step into their power and join the people on the front stage saying, let's change the world. Yeah. I'm really looking forward to meeting all of those people who step up and have stepped up. Yep. It's, it's what's who's needed. Next? Yeah, who's next? What would you like to do? What's, what's your dream? What, what do you see for the world? You know, what would you like the world to be for, you, for your family, for your kids? And this so is the seven future generations. Yep, this, seven future generations. This is the point where we shift everything and there's a there's a concept kicking around that there's going to be an event and conclusion I've I've had for some time now is the event is us stepping up it's as simple as that you go back and listen to walking in energy 3 I describe it step by step the event is us and then the the, the system can only react to, to movements it can't react to individuals sharing dreams changing the world at the grassroots level traveling from point to point, offering meetings for people to come and share their, their minds and their group their group images and inspiring others to do the same. It's a time of action, people. Action turns knowledge into wisdom. What actions do you have ahead of you so wisdom becomes truth and truth becomes knowledge and we become a free, sovereign species once again? That is our journey. Could I ask Andrew a question, Chris? For sure, Andre. Sure. Yeah, there's, there's a good few minutes here and it's like plateaued a bit. And I'd like to ask something that might take it another level for everyone listening, right? So say, you know, for instance, in the Till Scott interview or Tally Seminar that Andrew did, there was 800 billion uh, beings listening, right? On the planet Earth, at the moment, you know, there might be a couple hundred thousand and basically they all want to reach Andrew but potentially they're not all going to do it. So I'd just like to ask Andrew what it means for a listener in their time now on the earth in amongst the seven billion people that are here. What does it mean for the individual to be aware of you at the moment? It's a great deal because one degree of separation as many people realize, I'm Andrew Bartsis, and I'm the galactic historian. I'm affecting the micro and the macro at the same time. Chris is affecting the micro and the macro at the same time. So is KP, and so is, and so is Hope Girl. We are both operating on the micro and macro. And it is our 3D awakened I am present self that must make the choices. Our higher selves are playing out the higher self chess moves of the choices we make here in the present. So for all those people listening live, for all those non-physical entities listening live, it's the I am presence that makes the choice. It is the one that is in time that chooses to be in no time that makes the choice to change. When we no longer agree to the social agreement of time, time is a social agreement, we go into no time. By creating a no time field, all the non-physical dream worlds have access to our physical I am present self. And it's the I am present self duty to be clean of negative energy, to be happy and enjoy light, love, and bliss, to follow their heart's desire. Just as both KP and Hope Girl said, <laughs> you go with the flow. You don't need to make a schedule because the universe is walking in step with you. And when you begin to see the synchronicities abound over and over and over again until your awakened facade mind has to say, the universe is here with every footstep, with every voice, with every person that comes forward. Keep those I am presence awake and aware. Keep speaking your truth. Keep speaking your honesty. Keep turning action into wisdom. And with wisdom comes the next layer of unity consciousness that the non-physical beings that are one, two, or three degrees of separation from the prime creator are functioning with us and against us because it is the natural flow of the seasons and the moving of the stars and the passing of the galactic torch to the new generation that is standing up in their I am present self and saying, no, we make the choice in a free-willed universe. 
Andre, thank you for asking that question. Yeah, no, no worries. I mean, I feel it's, for me individually, it's a great honour to be aware of this stuff now. I mean, it feels like uh, it's now is the time that we're going to remember, right? You know? Oh, yeah. Right. Yeah. Now is the time we're going to remember who we are, what we are, where we came from. And now is the time to get angry. You can get angry, but don't get into revenge. Anger is a motivational tool that can be used even in the sacred neutral perspective to enforce your sovereign free will. And in the time to come, there will be many, many more that will reveal many more layers of our galactic history. My purpose is very specific. It cuts like a, skirt, a scalpel at the very heart of the facade, cutting holes into the reality for people to look through on their own free will and say, there is something on the other side. There is something on the other side. It is your dream world. It is unity consciousness waiting for you with the complete answers, with all your soul family, with all of your ancestors saying, we welcome you, brothers and sisters. Everybody listening to this broadcast is, is part of these pebbles that are being thrown into the collective to, to create ripples that expand outwards. And uh, I, I speak about right. this a lot. And don't feel that if you're just a passive listener that you're just you're just an observer traveling along. Um, the, the energy that's put out through these shows is re-expressed through you to those around you at a subconscious level, at a consciousness level. And, and this is part of what's actually going on here. And, and st stepping up and, and physically becoming part of the process just takes it a step further. But even listening, even being aware, as Andre just said, that uh, this uh, incredible change that we're all going through is an absolutely uh, vital part of, of this new energy that we're actually building here. That's right. And Hope Girl and KP, if you're still listening, I encourage you both to listen to these Teal Scott, Andrew Bartz's interview with Chris Hales and Helene Lipson. It is a truly groundbreaking consciousness exploration, the revelation of action into wisdom. It covers many topics. Some of the topics are very difficult to understand, but it gives you, the people that are at the front of consciousness exploration and change on this world, a very clear example of how the higher powers and the lower vibration powers are working in entropy and creation and procreation. It is a very revealing thing on many, many, many layers. It is one of those things that should be shared wide and far. There will be some of those that understand it, and there'll be those that understand it that are one step away of being out of their cubicle or off their island in Hawaii and making their journey to free the soul shards of those they're related to in the fallout shelters. And one of the, um, the things that I'm learning, every, every time we have one of these sessions where we really reach in and, and bring out these, these truths is just, is just how bound we are to the the past the history of this planet and how important it is to set it free uh, and and break out of the bonds that we've actually been in even though they're invisible to us they are as as real as steel and we're just a moment away from 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 snapping those just an instant it's going to be it's going to feel like an intake of breath and 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 we'll be free we just have to hold to this course and for those that want to go and listen to it, you can go to SovereignMedia.net and you can get access to the Teal Scott replay with, Ann, with me. And you can pay $1.11, you can pay $11, or you can pay $111. We made it a sliding scale. So for those of you that are just a little bit of money, it's something for you to reach out and listen to. It's three hours of the highest vibrational entities in this front of this world saying there is a truth in your heart, and your heart is the truth, and the subject matters that we bring up are helping hearts expand into their own truth. Andrew, uh, we're, we're just coming up to the end of the show, it, and uh, it's been an absolutely fantastic show. It, it's so synchronistic, I can't tell you just how much. Hope, are you still with us? I'm still here. Yeah, and I'm sure you're you're really feeling that yourself. Um, I'm going to be asking people to to really spread this show around. 
uh, I think it really points to how the everything we're doing is so interconnected and mm. so important. Uh, I think everybody needs to listen to to this show as this particular show as well as as to the the Teal Scott interview and to the show we did last Friday actually at the end of that show we had a couple of amazing phone calls and I'm sorry we haven't been able to attend to calls today but we'll we'll definitely get back to those at the start of the next show if anyone needs to call in call in at the start of the next show and we'll we'll go through some questions then but look this is uh ha has been a great moment for pulling together threads of stories and revealing the true purpose. Uh, and uh, again, Andrew, and I know Andre feels the same, thank, thank you for your presence here at this time, Hope, thank you for yours, KP if you're still listening, thank you for yours and, and thank you to everybody that's out there listening. Um, I'll be doing uh, obviously the Galactic History show in two days time and I've got the long conversation tomorrow and um, synchronistically, I'm um, not too sure who'll be on in the second half yet but I'm just waiting for the universe to reveal that to me over the next 24 hours and although well, I think it already has done, I just haven't made that connection yet, I've got a suspicion, I know exactly where it's going to go. But um, Please join us for, for those shows and, and all the shows, the shows that Lisa Harrison and uh, that, that uh, I was doing before. I've kind of jumped onto my own channel. Um, you know, it's, it's important to follow along those shows if you're, if you're so motivated to do so, if you're finding you're getting support from there, support from here. You'll always get support from here, uh, no matter what's going on. And I collective really look... Imagination is a, collective imagination is a great arrangement of people that are working forward and moving forward, as well as the Lisa Harrison show. No, they're truth fighters. They are all truth fighters. We're all fighting the same fight. There is only one, yes. and, and, and this is it. So thank you very much for, for bringing your consciousness to this program today and for all the people who are listening to this in the future. Um, you're participating as if you were here at this moment, and your energy is being lent to this moment. That's why these shows are just so important. So to everybody who's participated today, I really thank you from, from the bottom of my heart. And uh, I just want to uh, keep this going, keep this energy moving forward, help people to step up, find something inside themselves that, that brings out their desire to step up. Hope, do you have any final thoughts for the listeners? Um, that there is hope. And that's something people seem to have forgotten, and I've been helping to remind them of that. And I just want to make sure that everybody remembers that there is, in fact, hope, and there are solutions. And don't listen to the lies. Mm. Where there's life, there is hope. We are breaking through, and it's all happening right now as we speak. Mm. Andre, any last thoughts? Sorry about that. I had the meat button stuck. Um, just thank you for the honor of having me. And um, good evening or good afternoon from Spaceship Adelaide, Australia. Yes, love that. Andrew, uh, this is fantastic Look Out fantastic Mountain show. signing off. Yeah, and yeah. from me, thank you, Andrew, so much for, for all of your information as usual and, uh, and your, your great way of actually pulling together all the information in these sessions into something that's really meaningful. So it's, it's a good day to you from down here in Melbourne, Australia. Hope you'll join us in a couple of days' time. Uh, keep your eye out on, on our respective Facebook pages, that's Hope's and Andrew's and, and mine, for information about upcoming shows. And we hope you have a really great day. We'll see you in a couple of days' time.